to kick us off, I'd like to introduce uh, John Mortimer. John is a systems convener, service designer, business consultant, and he's part of the Human Learning Systems Network. John, uh, welcome uh, to today's event. Thanks for taking the time to join us. John, you've spent a lot of time thinking about measurement and advice organizations on the role of measurement when navigating uncertainty and complexity. Could you tell us about the role you see measurement having for learning, performance in organizations that work on complex problems? You know, what, what purpose should measurement serve here? What does it look like in practice? Over to you, John. Thank you very much. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is it'll be myself and also I've brought in Roxin, Roxanne Tandridge, who was, we were working together uh, in a local authority with regard to systemic change. And what we were doing is working on changing the services, but also on uh, implementing a new way of working with regard to the thinking of the leaders. So. Um, Roxanne will do a short piece uh, at the end uh, of this session. So let me start. So where we are is, um, and this is the way that I start with any of the organizations that I, I work with, including those leaders, is that to recognize that the paradigm that where we come from right now today, that we all are familiar with, comes from uh, the work that has been done from 100 years ago in industry, in organizations across the world uh, when we train to become managers very often we see a, an organization or a system like a machine where you have uh, inputs you have processing and you have outputs and the management objective is to make the numbers and this of course comes from taylorism who developed uh, scientific management um, and, and that's an important area that we need to understand. A lot of people that we work with are coming from that place. And there, reductionism is what they is what we are all used to. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to look at this from the perspective of measurement and evaluation. Because traditionally, uh, we want to move away. We want to look at alternative metaphors to the current one, which we all know and love. So um, we also know that uh, we want to move away from this where we produce reports and that report lands on the desk of some decision maker. And uh, we both know that the information in there has probably been massaged for them. And uh, the person who's reading it doesn't have the time to read it all. So um, what we're talking about now is much more about sense making and less about data. It's about systems thinking and it's about complexity. So what what we used to do very often is that we have senior people uh, in the green box that do the plans, uh, that do the timing, that decide what the outcomes are that should be and what the costs should be. So they use project management, which is a very logical approach. Uh, and that is very often imposed. So uh, that what then happens is that we create measures against that initial criteria we look at variance against what was expected we look at we look at what we think is good and we look at what we think is bad and we chase up what we think is bad we use numerical charts and we use trends and the job of the people doing the work is to comply and a lot of that is driven by fear so we know that this doesn't work and that's why we're here. So what we're gonna do is look at an alternative way at redefining uh, measurement. So if we push aside the machine metaphor that we have and we reframe that using systems thinking, what are we left with? Well, let's, let's look at a different purpose to measurement. And if we replace compliance with understanding and learn, so if that's what we're here to do, to understand and to learn, what does that look like with regard to the decision makers and the others that we work with? Well, the, one of the first things it looks like is that those decision makers have to get far closer to where the work occurs. And that line that you saw gets wider because that connection has to get more direct, but it also takes on a different nature, which I'm going to be showing you soon. So this is a, actually a fundamental change. We don't have that feedback anymore, that formal feedback. What we end up with is a team where 
the purpose is to understand and learn for both of those groups of people and they do it together and that's what i'm going to be showing you here so one of the first things i do is i work with the decision makers and the team and i help them with a bit of background a bit like you have seen now but obviously taking a little bit longer about it about scientific management about the hierarchy model and and, and talk to them about what what different ways are possible to look at organizations or whole systems and what i'm going to be showing you are artifacts that have come from uh, the team that roxanne and i work with and also from other teams and an important part of this that i explained before was about leaders and um, decision makers being part of the team so this is an outcome that the team were doing on the whiteboard and there were some activities here for leaders to take away and do themselves so they had to go off and do some of those things so this is one way of engaging them another way of engaging them is <clears throat> you can see here two members of the team frontline members that were pulling out the learning from the work that we were doing and next to them sitting next to them is one of the decision makers and her job was to learn what was going on and to learn what the team are doing so that they understand where the numbers actually come from and these are all artifacts that that we that were created by the team they weren't created for a presentation they were created because that's what they were actually using themselves so these are all examples of that and we've got here um, the the cases that the team that Roxanne and I work with the case, the re records about what we were doing with the cases were actually written up on a whiteboard and we would use those for ourselves we would also use it for the leaders that would come and engage with us and when we wanted to help them to learn how much work was involved in let's say doing assessments what we would do is that we would print out those assessments and we would have them there so that they could actually leaf through them and get some understanding of the work involved in doing those assessments and then you've got examples of the end-to-end -end case of uh, moving from a reductionist perspective to an end-to-end -end perspective focusing on value uh, and moving from cost to causes of cost and looking at whole outcomes and this is an example of the team um, and I'm not going to use the word presenting uh, but we were having a meeting where we were we were talking about what the outcomes were and what the learning was and this is still about numbers so this is one of the artifacts that was developed where we actually put numbers in there that perhaps would have would have been placed in a chart but these numbers are, in, are, are, are together with all the other artifacts. And of course, there's a methodology that we have to use that, is, uh, that is, allows for this experimentation and an iterative approach. So that's, that's enough from me. So what I'm now going to do is hand you over to Roxanne and she's going to take you through her experience with one of the leaders. Uh, leaders. Thank you, Roxanne. <laughs> Thanks, John. So yeah, I just thought I'd um, put a bit of, sort of like, what, okay, what does that actually look like in real life um, when you're working with a leader? So as John said, I was working with this team, they were working in adult health and social care in local government. I was working with a team of frontline staff and their area manager was called Nikki. And she was very connected with the work. She was there in the room with them. She was seeing these measures as they were developing what these new measures would look like. And she was really engaged and she really understood um, the difference that these new measures were making. But she started to have a bit of a bit of a wobble and a bit of a bit of dissonance around these new measures are great, but I'm creating pages and pages of report every month to take to my senior leadership meeting with my peers and my director. And they they don't seem to connect. What do we do? So rather than just dismissing the old measures out of hand, because I know we probably all know that chances are those measures aren't going to be helpful. Um, but to do so would have just pushed it too far too soon and, and created some sort of disconnect. So we sat down together and looked through them together and thought, well, OK, some of these measures might still be helpful. Let's think about them. Are they help? Are they telling us whether we're achieving our purpose and our purpose in that team was to um, understand and do what matters for people really simple purpose um, are they helping us learn whether we're achieving our principles or not of keeping it legal not breaking the bank and understanding people um, and if they're not why aren't they and one by one we were realizing that none of these measures answered those questions 
um, none of the, those measures actually told her that the people that they were trying to help were better off or not for the interventions that her service provided. So obviously that was a bit of a moment for her and a bit of a wobble. Um, and she went to, okay, well, we still need to have those measures, but we can just have the new ones as well. We'll have both. And I was like, mm, okay, well, let's dig a little bit deeper. So we dug a little bit deeper into these measures and discovered that not all, but but some and most probably, not only did they not help us understand whether we were achieving purpose, they actively drove behaviour that was counter to it. Mm. So we had, uh, to give you just one example, there was a measure, um, so there were nurses in her team and the one of the measures on the nurses, they were, they were able to sort of raise red flags against each other if they saw anything that they thought was risky. Um, now on paper that measure is there to help keep patients safe, you know, they want to safeguard patients, they don't want people doing risky things with patients, that makes total sense. But what it drove was one, a terrible culture of fear and mistrust and blame and a terrible working atmosphere which wasn't getting the best out of the people. But aside from that it also stopped any kind of innovation, they just did what the process was telling them, regardless of whether they knew that that was the right thing for the patient or not. So they would be taking action that they knew wasn't the right thing for the patient, but they didn't feel like they could do anything different. And then when we were working them with them in this new way of working, working to purpose and principles, it actually took quite a lot of time and effort to decondition them from the behaviours that they would start, you know, they were subconsciously doing. These weren't necessarily conscious things. It was all in their subconscious. So it wasn't just a case of turning off old measures or replacing with them new. We had to also just decondition them. And, and Nikki realised that you couldn't have both measures because they would just contradict each other. And the, the stronger, already conditioned measure would always win out. So there was quite a process to decondition and then replace those old measures with new ones that told them, to do the right thing. So that's me. Thank you very much, Chris. And thank you, John. Uh, this was absolutely fascinating. Um, John, I like the idea of moving from this command and control measurement towards you know, learning. I like this real world example you had on what it actually looks like. Uh, and moving away from measurement is driven by fear. Uh, you know, I think that's a seems like a pretty common sense thing, but but maybe it might not be. Um, and Roxanne, I you know, I think it's really interesting to just hear how measurement can drive behaviors, you know, how measurement helps shape an organizational culture that may be desirable or, or, or not desirable. 